Hey, thanks for tuning in. Listen, on the MPTE, you have to be prepared for those questions that ask you, you know, what is the best course of action? Have you ever seen something like that? Well, in this episode, I am going to challenge your knowledge by asking you, well, what's the best course of action using a practice exam question? All right, so you ready for me? All right, so let's think strategy. All right, thanks for joining me. Kyle Rice here, the MPTE Prep Coach, and we are about to dominate this freaking question. You ready for me? All right, let's hit it. So we have Davis, a 54-year-old male with congestive heart failure, is performing a six-minute walk test. Now, prior to the test, the physical therapist assessed the patient's vitals and found the following. So we have a heart rate of 89 beats per minute. The SpO2 is 95%. The blood pressure is 130 over 88 millimeters of mercury. Now, two minutes into the six-minute walk test, the patient requires a seated rest break. Now, the th physical therapist assesses his vitals again and finds the following. So we have the heart rate of 142 beats per minute. SpO2 is now at 98%. The blood pressure is now at 108 over 80 millimeters of mercury, okay? And so what is the physical therapist's best course of action? So we have A, immediately stop the test. B, continue with the test for another two minutes and reassess vitals. C, call EMS. And D, continue with the rest of the test if the patient is asymptomatic, all right? So when we come up here to the top, we have Davis, this 54-year-old male with congestive heart failure, um, is performing the six-minute walk test. Well, the six-minute walk test is one of those very reliable, valid tests that we use to assess a patient's aerobic capacity, all right? And it says, prior to us administering this test, the physical therapist assessed the patient's vitals and found the heart rate being at 89 beats per minute. Now, with congestive heart failure, that's one of those conditions where the heart is really having difficulty meeting the demands of the body, right? And so the, the heart is having difficulty pumping that blood out. And so one way that the heart tries to compensate is by increasing the heart rate. So the, the heart rate being at 89 beats per minute, not too concerned about that right now. Um, that's not something very alarming. SpO2, 95%. Yeah, it's on the lower side, but again, not something to be crazily alarmed about. And then we also have the blood pressure being at 130 over 88 millimeters of mercury. Okay, a little bit on the hypertensive side here, but again, not something for us to be, you know, going crazy over at this point. All right, so it says two minutes into the six minute walk test, the patient requires a seated rest break. Now, this is very common for the six minute walk test where your patients sit down. Okay, the clock is still going to run for the six minute walk test. We're just stopping, no big deal. All right. Um, it says that the physical therapist, though, takes this opportunity to assess the patient's vitals again and finds the following. So we have the heart rate is at 142 beats per minute. Now we're elevated. Well, that's typical with exercise. We expect to have that increase of heart rate with exercise. It's 142. If you do some mathematics here, it's showing us that we're really getting into the vigorous level of exercise. I'm not too alarmed by that at this point. There's not something that is really sticking out to me as something that we need to address, okay? SpO2, 98%. Well, that's better than what it was before, so our oxygenation is pretty darn good, okay? And then we're looking at the blood pressure last, and that's 108 over 80 millimeters of mercury. All right, and that, so now that's something to really think about because you see that we have that reduction of the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. Um, and that is not typical for exercise. What should we be seeing is the question that you have to be asking right now. We have to slow up and be like, what should we be seeing as far as the blood pressure? Well, we should be seeing an increase in the systolic blood pressure. That's normal. But for the diastolic, with exercise, the diastolic blood pressure could stay about the same or it could even drop a bit. It can even be decreased. And so I'm not too worried about the, the diastolic going from 88 to 80, but that 130 systolic blood pressure down to the 108 is, is a significant response. It's something that we really need to be worried about because that's 
that is signifying potentially some cardiovascular pump dysfunction. So the question says, what is the physical therapist's best course of action? All right, back to that. What's that best course of action? So we have A, immediately stop the test. Well, guess what? I love this answer. Reason being is that, listen, is it normal for our systolic blood pressure to drop with exercise? No, actually CSM states in the book, for, and you need to have this information for your MPTE. All right, ACSM's guidelines state that if with exercise, the patient's systolic blood pressure drops, all right, with exercise, you should immediately stop the exercise, especially if it drops 10 or more points in systolic blood pressure, all right? So if it drops at all, we should be stopping exercise, especially if it drops uh, 10 or greater than 10 in the systolic blood pressure, we should stop it, okay? And so that is a correct answer, immediately stop the test, I like that. Reason being is that, you know, if we see a drop in the systolic blood pressure, that's letting us know that there's potentially a left ventricular dysfunction where the person's having even harder difficulty, even greater difficulty getting that blood out. The left ventricle is not doing its job. The drop in systolic blood pressure can also mean that the person's having a myocardial ischemia. Both of these are situations that could be potentially life-threatening, and we need to do something about it. Immediately stopping the test is a good answer. Is it the best answer? Well, we don't know that just yet. We have to look at the rest of the answer choices. We have B. B says continue, all right, continue with the test for another two minutes, reassess vitals. Well, I don't really like this answer. And the reason being is that the drop in systolic blood pressure automatically is a problem, all right? We should not see that with exercise. If there's a chance that we potentially have a left ventricular dysfunction that's getting worse or a myocardial ischemia, we need to stop. We need to see what's going on. Don't continue because we could potentially be pushing our patient towards a myocardial infarction and therefore death on site, okay? And so we do not want that. That is an opportunity to get yourself sued, an opportunity more so to harm your patient. And so B is not a good answer. Plus it violates ACSM's guidelines, all right? Next, C, call EMS. Really attractive answer. I kind of like this one. The only problem is the fact that just because we have that drop in this systolic blood pressure, that doesn't mean that this is an emergent situation, though. The question doesn't say anything about additional signs or symptoms, the patient passing out, the patient complaining of severe chest pain. You know, it doesn't say anything that warrants us calling EMS. Anything that's stating, yes, for sure, this is a medical emergency. Now, with any additional information that might be given, you know, if the patient started to complain of severe chest pain that didn't go away, you know, with rest or with nitroglycerin or something along the lines of that, then that is grounds for calling EMS. But right now we don't have the necessary information that we need in order to warrant that call. So C, not the best answer. Don't really like it. Still, A seems to be our best. Let's look at D. D says continue with the rest of the test if the patient is asymptomatic. Here's the deal. We already said that drop in the systolic blood pressure is not normal. We need to make sure that we're seeing what's going on. What's attractive about D, though, is the fact that it says if the patient's asymptomatic. But even though that your patient is asymptomatic, we still have to figure out why is there that drop in the systolic blood pressure. Again, we can have a potential myocardial ischemia or worsening left ventricular dysfunction that's currently happening, all right? I know you've heard of the silent killers, right? You've heard of that silent killer where it's the myocardial infar infarction and unfortunately the patient dies with little to no symptoms, all right? So that's very similar in this case, saying that just because our patient is asymptomatic, that doesn't mean that there's not something serious underlying that's going on. And so D is 
really being neglecting of our patient. It's a, it's abusing the patient in a, in a certain way to where we're potentially just neglecting the fact that there's that drop in systolic blood pressure and we're putting our patient at harm if we continue. All right. And so that eliminates D. Final answer is A here. Immediately stop the test. Again, that goes along with the ACSM's exercise guidelines. All right. Now, if you got this question correct, congratulations. If you didn't get this question correct, you know, did you select B or D? Because if you did, you may not have truly understood what it meant to to have that systolic blood pressure drop like that. Did you know that it could possibly be a, a worsening left ventricular dysfunction? Possibly be myocardial ischemia? Well, that is now grounds for you not continuing with the, with the test because it could make it worse, all right? So that is reasons why BRD would not be correct. Now, here's the deal. For those of you who selected D as the answer, you have to watch out for words like asymptomatic. What the test maker is trying to do here is put this word in there to negate the fact that there was the drop in systolic blood pressure. The fact that it says asymptomatic makes you feel like, well, maybe this isn't that bad. We should continue until there's symptoms. Well, that's incorrect because it goes against the fact that, listen, the patient does have that drop in systolic blood pressure. We need to do something about it. And so that is a big test taking strategy error that is made there, you know, giving too much weight to the asymptomatic part of the question. All right. Either way, I want to congratulate you for dominating this question. High five. Either way, virtual high five. Let's get it. Listen, if you would like more questions like these, what I want you to do is I want you to follow the link. It's up there. I have additional questions to help you go through your test taking strategy and become even better at dominating MPTE based questions. All right. Can't wait to see you in the next episode. Have a good one.